We got people from Canada. We got people from Toronto. Toronto is now Hollywood North. We got people from Vancouver. We go to, from Los Angeles, we go to Vancouver all the time and shoot. So we have people up there. We've got people all over, all over the United States. Atlanta is now the busiest film market in the entire world. So if you're in Atlanta, you're very lucky. You gotta get into the film industry there. New York City is also very busy right now. Los Angeles is busy right now. The summer's coming up, so they're gonna be a lot of shooting all over the world. So we've got people that are actually in the A-list program in Friends and Film from all over the world. So this is great. It's a very international group and we all refer work to each other. We all know each other. If you guys end up doing the A-list program, which is something that we're not going to be talking about for a couple of days, um, not until the end of the training, I'll give you the option to find out about the A-list program. But that's our paid program where you learn and you actually use our implement, you implement the A-list system to get work like on film sets, like feature films, scripted TV shows, big stuff. Like we've got people from the A-list program that are working with Scorsese, working with Spielberg. We've got people all over the world working and we pass work to each other. And the great thing about it is that if you end up doing A-list, you guys, um, you can do it. And once you're in this network, you can get work from other people and that can easily pay for it. This is our paid program as A-list. And then we have our free program, which is Phone Connection. So I just want you to know that it's out there, but you don't ever have to do A-list. Uh, so you can just stay and just do Film Connection and get a lot from just Film Connection. You know, people have gotten like internships, they've gotten auditions, they've gotten um, all sorts of stuff just from like acting roles. Uh, uh, working together on films just from Film Connection, which is our free training. What we're going to do today is I'm going to share with you my story. And what we're going to do this weekend is I'm going to have you guys, like we're going to have a workshop where you're going to come up with what your story is, like what you want to do in the film industry. And if you're already in the film industry, where you want to actual, actually go and what you want to develop, your career that you want to develop. You're going to get very specific about it, like where you want to be working, what kind of shows, what sector you know, how much money you want to be making, where you want to be living, the kind of people you want to be surrounded by. You're also going to get specific, like who do you want to get your training from? Like who are some of the people that it would be great for your career if you personally knew these people? You're going to see from my story that there's some very specific things that I did really well and some things that I did not do so well. And so you can learn from me for, for you know, looking at all of this stuff. So then after that, I'm going to ask you guys some questions. I'm going to unmute a couple people and just talk to them and just help you out. And this is really kind of like to get you over the hump day. Like you have to come in this with a, like a lot of questions like, you know, what am I going to get out of this? And, and you know, can I, get it, can I get into the film industry with the experience that I have so far? You know, did, what if I don't have very much experience? What if I don't have enough experience for it to build a good resume? Or, you know, people come in like sending their reel to production companies and nobody responds. Uh, you might be meeting professionals and they can be discouraging to you. It can feel like it's a closed shop. I understand that. Like, you know, where they're like, you know, we don't need any more people here. And, you know, they just feel like they're not very open. Uh, that does not mean that you cannot work in the film industry, you guys. It's just that you have to approach it a different way. Because it's true that a lot of these professionals, they have worked very hard for their careers. And that's the most important thing to them. Now, it's get it factor for you to be able to understand where they're coming from so that when you talk to them, you're like music to their ears. Like you have that get it factor. Like you understand how it is, how the industry works and what you can provide them to be an advantage for them for their career. Because really everybody is going to be thinking about their own careers. So when you ask them, hey, how can I become what you're doing? They're going to give you a response like, well, it's going to take you a long time. And first, you've got to spend five years as a production assistant and then another five years working for, you know, this kind of thing like TV shows, work, start at the bottom, work really hard, and eventually maybe you'll get somewhere. I remember that people were kind of discouraging to me too because they're like, hey, you know, it took me a long time to get where I'm at and, you know, so you should have to do everything that I did. And there's a part of them, and it's probably subconscious, you know, where they're like, I don't need more competition either, you know? I don't need more people, I don't need to help other people to come in to compete with me. I've heard people, even on the film set, say this. 
So, you know, that's like kind of subconscious, but you have to know that that people are thinking like this. So how you how do you create a career when that's the environment is the whole question because, you know, this whole business, you guys, you know that it's freelance, right? Everybody knows it's freelance. Everybody's freelance. Yeah, directors are freelance, producers are freelance, actors are freelance. Um, I'm freelance. I'm a sound mixer. I'm the head of the sound department. I'm freelance. Um, you know, uh, everybody's freelance. So because we're all freelance, that means that we only make money when we're working. You know, when we're on a film set or we're in pre-production -pre for a shoot, on set or uh, like when we're in the wrap mode, which is after the shoot is finished and then it goes to post-production. So depending on the job that you have, you're working in either all three of those areas or you're just working in one. Now for me, how many of you guys know as a sound person, head of the sound department, when do I work? Pre-production, shooting, or the wrap? Nope. <laughs> nope, I don't work in post-production. <laughs> During filming, that's right. So there are post-production people, but I'm not post. I am film set. I don't want to sit in a dark room, in the editing room, and do post-production. That would be a whole different career. I would be making half as much money, and it would be totally boring. Um, no, the career that I have, I'm on different film shoots all the time. Like every week, like I've got one on Friday. I would have had a five-day shoot last week and a couple more several-day shoots last week, but then I did a training last week, so I had to turn all that stuff down. So when I turn down work, you guys, how much money do I make? Zero. That's right. You got it now. Yes, I make zero money. And, uh, but what do I do? What do I do when, I, when that happens? They call me. I'm like, oh, crap. I'm not available. What do I do? Refer it to somebody else. That's right. Then I refer it to somebody else. Now, do I refer it to somebody that just calls me up and says, Janet, I always wanted to be in the sound business and I always wanted to be in the film industry and, you know, I'm a sound mixer. Do I just refer it to them? No. Nope. <laughs> that's right. And why would that be? I don't know them, right? Number one. Number two. That's right. I got to trust them. Yeah, because the people that call me, they have a relationship with me. I have a relationship with them. They're calling me. Anybody that I refer, I got to take care of those people with. I've got to be like, oh, you want to call Gary? He's available on these days. I'll check with Gary first. He's really good. He's been doing this for a long time. He's got a lovely personality. Your director will love him. And so I sell that person too. And not only that, yes, it will make me look bad. Yeah, they won't call me again if I give them somebody that's not very good, right? And... Um, yeah, it's a good reflection. It has to be a good reflection of myself. Also, you guys, we all have a team of people. And you're going to see, you're going to have a team of people, people that you refer. Now, they're not only people that, ref that you refer that will be part of your team. Sometimes they'll also be people that will help you look really good and do your job really well. So, for instance, if you're in camera department, if you're a DP, who would be a great person to have in your team? Like maybe some editors, right? You know, you're like shooting something and you're like, wow, I, I'm not sure if this is going to cut together. We're moving left to right here and, you know, we're shooting with these two different cameras and they have different shots and we got this kind of lens. And you may call up some editors. Hey, you know, have you cut together shots, shot like this? Um, you'll ask him, hey, we're move, going from, you know, process trailer stuff to this super close up and the road is bumpy. So we're getting some bumps and we don't have this stabilizer. So are you able to do anything in post? Oh, you guys, when you have these kind of relationships that are cozy, good relationships, you will look good. And in fact, it even makes you look, it, you're not only saving your ass, you're saving the producer's ass, the director's ass. If anything goes wrong, you won't get the call, but neither will the producer, neither will the director, neither will the production company. You know, so, you know, th th this is part of that get it factor. You're going to get a lot of this this week. So you're really going to start understanding. Now, when you have this understanding, it benefits you so much because you're able to then talk to people with this understanding underneath it. Like you cannot fake this, you know, you kind of, and I know that, um, you know, we have people at all different experience levels here. You know, we have people that are already production assistants on shoots and they just want to move into acting, writing, directing. We have people like that here. We've got people that are still in school. We've got people that are doing all these professional stuff and they're just, they don't even know, but they just want an exciting career. They don't really know what they want to do. They know they're interested in certain things, but they don't know about all the different jobs out there. Back to, 
what I was going to finish say saying when I refer somebody is I'm referring somebody that also can refer me work back in the future. Because when I, like last week, I gave, all, I gave, I think it was a six day shoot. You know, that's $2,000 a day or more actually um, that I make when I'm working. And that's how much everybody else makes too when they're working. So that's like what, $12,000, right? So uh, yeah, when I give that, a job like that to somebody, I want to make sure that they're going to be able to refer it back to me. Now, actually, you know who I referred for this job? It was my husband, because he's a mixer too. <laughs> so I kept it in the family. But it doesn't always um, happen like that because sometimes Joe is booked too. So this is the beauty of it, is having a list of people that you also refer work to, and then they refer you work back. And, it, and sometimes they'll refer me work back, you guys. And this is gonna be the same for you. This is why it's relevant to you. All of this is all relevant. We're all, no matter what you're doing, it's all, it's all the same, because it's freelance and it's certain crafts. So the business side of it is what is gonna all be the same. You will make friends with people that refer you work directly. You'll make, have friends with people that can help you do your job even better. People that will save your ass while you're on the job, but also people that will help you set up for a job. You know, there's many times that I've gotten a call, especially when I was starting out, and I never did certain things before. When you're starting out, you're put into situations because you've never done it before. Like, it takes a long time where you have enough experience under your belt where you're like, almost any situation, you just know exactly what to do. So a lot of times I would be in new situations like process trailer and earwigs, and they're playing back a song. And remember this one um, really tough shoot. I was um, shooting in the mountains, and it was with a director. His name's Frederick Bond, and I actually named my cat after him. He's a Swedish director, Frederick Bond. He's just this really, he's an amazing director, really pretty famous director. And uh, I had never worked with him before. And the producer I had worked with who was actually Swedish too, which by the way, you guys, we work all over the world. So what I'm saying here is relevant. If you're anywhere in the world, all the film industry works exactly the same way. It's all production companies, it's all directors, all of the, the way that it goes on the set, the protocol, the departments, even the positions, they're all the same. So how you get work is the same as well. Okay, so if you're like, well, does this apply to London? Yeah, <laughs> it applies to London and everywhere else because we all work with each other. Like I work with London people, I work with French people. I go over there, they come over here. All right, so, um, I'm, so, the, so this uh, producer uh, refers me to the director. Oh, this is the best sound mixer. You're going to love her. She's so great. She's so great. Oh, very nice to meet you, Frederick. And um, I was nervous, you guys. Because uh, I knew I had seen and I had actually made a phone call to somebody that is like my mentor the night before because they gave me the storyboards and I looked at them and I'm like, okay, we're on process trailer, we're way up in the mountains, there's, you know, there's not even any cell phone service up there. I've got to play back something in her earwig. She's going to be singing. We've got two cameras shooting through the windshield, and I don't even know what other kinds of shots we might end up doing because you never know exactly how they're going to shoot those storyboards. I'm calling my mentor. I'm like, well, what could go wrong? What, what kind of backup could I need? Should I have the second computer with me? Uh, what if the earwigs don't work? What if I have interference? What should I do then? And uh, what else could I possibly, like could possibly screw me up with this? And he's, and he's just telling me, and he's telling me, I'm like, okay, great. And then I go and I get it ready. And then on the day, it worked. Everything worked except for I hired somebody new that was assisting me and this person didn't do his job very well and he actually had a microphone in the shot the whole, on a con complete run. And you, does everybody here know what process trailer is? That is a, um, that's a trailer that the camera, the director, myself, uh, anybody that's going to be you know, like the DP, anybody that needs to be there. Um, is on this big truck with this back to it. So we're all set up on that thing. And sometimes a camera's set up on that thing. Sometimes a camera's set up on the trailer. And then the car is on the trailer. So this is how we shoot stuff in a car, okay? So they can do a poor man's where they actually, you put a green screen behind it and they kind of move the, the car a little bit, but that's very rare. Like we, they do that in TV shows that have no budget. 
but you can tell eh, that's not real. You know, even today you can tell that's not real. So, you know, usually we're doing it the right way, which is process trailer where you actually see them, the person, they look like they're driving, but they're actually on a trailer. Uh, the, tr the car is on a trailer. The camera is either on the trailer, shooting through the windshield, shooting through the side door. Um, sometimes, sometimes they take the door off, sometimes they just shoot through the window. They have multiple shots. Sometimes they go in the back seat and they shoot forward. Like I just worked with Jeremy Renner a month ago and that's what we shot with him. It was a Super Bowl. No, it was not a Super Bowl spot. That was a Ram commercial. I might show you that maybe this weekend, that commercial. Once you get going, you're, we're in the mountains. We're going down this hill, the, down the mountain. You know, I'm in the front seat, okay? And I'm doing the playback and everything's going great. And, you know, I'm just, I'm pretty jumpy. We do this whole run. Once that thing starts, you can't like, you know, they're shooting. You can't pull over and fix something. I'm telling this guy, hey, check, make sure that the, can't, that the microphone is out of the shot. Well, we do the whole thing. And then I'm the one, because he's supposed to be watching it. I'm like, what is that in the shot there? I'm like, holy shit, that's my microphone in the shot during the entire way. And I'm like, oh God, oh no, no. So we get to the end of the run and we're about to turn around and go back and then we'll go back down again and get the same shot again. Maybe, you know, take two, take three, whatever. This was probably take two. So we'd done two shots with the microphone, this little furry microphone in the shot. And uh, so I'm like, I gotta tell them, you know, cause you gotta tell them, they gotta know that the shot is screwed up. So I, so I get off, when we turn around, I go to the director, I'm like, you know, I'm really sorry to tell you this, but there was a microphone in the shot. Let me show you on the monitor. Can we do playback really quick? Oh yeah, I'm gonna play. Okay, see right there. So just wanna let you know that. And the director goes, oh, that's okay. We got a special effects guy with us. We'll just, we'll just uh, uh, paint it out. I'm like, ah, oh, awesome, that's awesome. And I kind of forgot, I should have probably known this, but I forgot that all of these shoots are like have special effects people on them. So all of this guy's shoots have always have special effects because they're big budget shoots, you know? So I was like, oh boy, you know, if they could, if it was a problem though, then it would have been bad for me. And this is the thing when you're doing these niche jobs, you know, you've, you're always trying to anticipate what could go wrong or what you need to be thinking about. And they're just a million little details which by the way, you guys, it's so good. And actually put this in your story now as we start talking about getting ready for this weekend is you want to be able to learn when it doesn't cost you anything. Like you wanna be able to learn from the sidelines working with these departments like camera department or even like acting. You wanna learn on the sidelines watching working actors mess up, screw up, can't get it right, and then when they get it right and see what they practice and take on their practices and start modeling them. Watch these directors. A lot of you guys are directors. Watch these directors, not just how they interact with the, with the actors. That is the most basic thing that the directors do and everybody thinks, oh, that's what I'm learning to do. No, how you get the work allows you to be a director. The people that can get the work, they are directors. Now, what's the elements involved in getting the work as a director? It's actually true of all the crafts, but directing, so many people want to do that. The ones that are able to sell their vision and actually articulate it in a way that every, the peop, gets people saying, yes, 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 yes. Those are the ones that are working. And there's so many great talented directors out there, but if you don't know how to do, how to get the work, then you're not gonna direct. It just doesn't even matter. You can be the most, like have the best vision. So you have to, so what are the elements of that, by the way? Let's just see, because some of you guys are directors. What are some of the elements that it takes to actually get the work? Well, you meet people, you make friends, friends in film. You know, you don't initially go, hey, nice to meet you. Hey, um, if you ever would like to see my reel, I'll send it over tomorrow. You know, you just, you meet them, hey, you know, what are you, uh, what are you working on? What kind of work have you done? What are you most proud of? You start asking questions, getting to know them, all about them. And then you follow up, you might meet, oh, let's, let's meet for lunch sometime. Then you meet for lunch. So tell me about what's your background? What kind of stuff have you, uh, what kind of stuff do you specialize in? They could specialize in special effects. They could specialize in comedy. They could specialize in dramatic stuff. You know, people go all over the place. They could specialize in writing. They could specialize also in DP and writing. And different directors get hired for different specialties, different strengths. 
So there's some DPs that are also, there are some directors that are also DPs. Oh, that's a cr pretty killer combination because they're getting the emotion from the person, very subtle little emotional moments. Um, you know, like for instance, the Super Bowl spot that I just finished. Can you find that, by the way, with Tony Harris? Yes. <laughs> Other ways that you're getting work is you're writing a treatment, and that treatment might make references to the people that are to uh, other kinds of work out there that you're going to recreate. That's the kind of flavor that you're going to be uh, presenting or shooting. So you present like what the flavor is. Oh, this will be very 1960s. Everybody will be written like this. We'll put this kind of music behind it. We'll choose actors that have this kind of performance, that have this kind of look. We'll try to get this happening. We'll shoot it in an environment like this. So they're totally selling their vision and they're referencing films, TV shows, you know, a wide variety of stuff, so they're selling it, okay? So then when they do the conference call, they're also like, you want to model the way that they talk, you want to, you want to model the questions they ask, right? I'm in marketing at the moment, but also do freelance writing, that's awesome. Okay, camera, film marketing, okay. Wedding photographer, videographer, great, okay. So for wedding videography, you know, you're going to want to um, become, you wanna, you're going to want to get on these professional sets so that you can make relationships within the camera department. All right, because it's not, you're, you, the wedding stuff that you're shooting, they're not going to go, oh yeah, that's great, you should be shooting feature films, you know. I'm sure you know that, but uh, yeah, that will be your path. We'll be getting on set and then working in the camera department, becoming a camera assistant. And you'll make relationships. Every single set has got 50 to 75 people on it, and you'll make relationships with camera department people. Acting, trying to be a DP, auditor, and financial services. Oh, that's what you do right now, but what do you want to do in the film industry? Student, okay, all right, great. Great, cashier and Dollar Tree. Okay, well, makeup artist, there you go. That's a lot better than cashier. Okay, so I'm here to help you get paid professional work. And this is what I do is I help people do this professionally. Get into acting, writing, cinematography, hair, makeup, sound, special effects, special effects, makeup, stunts, any of the crafts on set and editing as well because if you think about it, who hires editors, producers and directors? So you wanna get on set and actually give yourself that experience so that you are more than everybody else because pretty much everybody can edit these days. So what it will mean for all of these crafts that I just talked about is that you're able to have the connections and make the relationships because everybody's freelance. The only way that you have a career is if you have like hundreds to thousands of these professional relationships and you keep them going and you get the call instead of somebody else. So that's what the film industry is, is a whole bunch of film shoots happening. And then there are people that hire you, there's people that refer you work, and both of those, okay, and they think of you and they call you for the job. And there's out of all these other people that they could pick, they choose you. So how do you make that happen in a business that's completely like people have to have worked with you and know you personally, like it's all word of mouth. How do you make that happen? That's why you're all here. You're not here because of me or any other reason, you know. You're here because you want to learn how to make that business situation happen. And that's what we're going to talk about this week. Now, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of little elements of this, which is why we'll be talking several times. And hopefully you've also got the training videos today. Have you guys been able to watch the first training video? Let me just put your hand up if you have. Yeah, pretty much everybody here. No? Okay, not yet. All right, well, you can do it tonight. That's fine. And everybody here, have you been able to get into Yammer yet? Yeah, are you in Yammer? Okay, that's awesome. So use Yammer to answer, to ask questions, to put your fun work. There's no fun work quite, quite yet, but on f Thursday, we're going to give you some fun work, okay? And you're going to start, and you'll get that on Thursday, okay? And you post that in Yammer. You all can also get to know each other in Yammer and make friends with each other. Don't just scan through like you do the Facebook groups. Just scan through and go, is there anything interesting, anything interesting? Ah, nah, I'm out of here. <laughs> 
what you want to do is when people post and introduce themselves, then you want to say, you want to make friends. Hey, that's awesome. I'm from there too. What do you do? Where'd you learn that? And, and spend some time in there because film industry is all relationships and there are people here that you may end up working with. Okay, so make friends, get, you know, start practicing it in that way. There's also the A-list mentors. Did you guys see some of the mentors in there and see what they've been doing? Yeah, they all did the A-list program. That's the paid program. And they did the paid program and none of them, all of them were trying to get in the business. They did the A-list program and now they're all in the business and they're moving in, they've moved into these crafts I'm talking about. DP, acting, uh, producing, production manager, coordinating, uh, special effects, special effects makeup. So yeah, it's awesome. So the whole point here, you guys, is that you guys don't, you didn't come here to see me to become production assistants, did you? No, no. Everybody's like, that's for sure. Right. So um, everybody uses that job to meet people and then they quickly move out of it. That's the whole point I want to tell you today. You don't even, you don't have to be a production assistant. It's just that it's very useful to do that job just to meet a, t if you do it with a fricking purpose, like you use it to meet everybody and to meet people in these departments where you can watch them and see how they handle all these things and be like soaking it all up from them, then you're super smart. If you do it with the intention that you're moving straight out of that into these niches, it's going to be the best thing you ever did. Now, if you do it with the idea of like, oh, I don't want to get stuck as a production assistant, then you're going to get stuck as a production assistant because you know why? Because you're dead. You're dead in your head, <laughs> you know, and there's a lot of people on set and even people that you've met that are probably telling you that, oh, you know, don't get stuck as a production assistant or my, my cousins got stuck as a product. Nobody gets stuck as anything. I did that job and I met a ton of people and then I used it to move into the craft that I'm in today. And that's what is smart because the th all answers are found on professional sets. Nobody's going to discover you. Nobody's looking for you because you know why? Because all of the professionals are working. They're working on film shoots. They're not like going, oh, who else out there is good? Everybody they need is all around them. And everybody that they want to refer is people that they know that will refer work, them work back, right? Okay, see, now you get that get it factor. So what you want to do is you want to get on all these sets all the freaking time. And then you want to make relationships with people in these departments, and then they'll start hiring you. And it'll be different for you than it will be for other people. Because you know why? When you're working with people in these departments, they become endeared to you because you're, you're in, you're one of us now. They're not going to give you that same, like if you meet somebody at a coffee shop, you're going to get a completely different uh, response than when you're on set working with them. First of all, they can see you working. Second, secondly, you're helping them out on the set. Thirdly, they're in an environment that they love. So they think of, they see you work, you work. They link the two together. They can see you're good. They can see you're nice. They can see what you're doing. You got the get a factor. They're going to refer you and they're going to pull you into their department. This is how it works for everybody. You guys, everybody works like this. Um, if you talk to people, you know, they'll say, yeah, I was, I was production assistant. It's a long time ago. They'll say, you know, maybe, but, um, the, the key is to do it and then move, use that opportunity as an opportunity to move out into what you want to do. That's what's, that's what's smart about it. And it's good because it pays 200 bucks a day. Typically, that's not bad. We have creativity. We are passionate people and we have the drive to really impact this world. This is what we are doing this for. And we want to become known in our craft. Um, this is why I'm here talking to you guys because I love the film industry. I love motivated people and I love creating something really special. And this actually is. I don't know if you can feel it yet or know it yet, but you will in a couple of days when you start talking to some of these mentors and you're going to hear from them, like they're going to be very encouraging. They're going to tell you how it is for them. They're going to really help you. I mean, where does this happen in the world? <laughs> You know, these are really, really beautiful people. And the thing is, is we know that the right people will be attracted to us 
Now, if they're, if, you're, if they're not nice people, we get rid of them immediately. We screenshot them and they are out. And the, well, by the way, the film industry is a small world. So uh, don't be negative or uh, bother people because then you will be blacklisted, um, which is what will happen in the film industry anyway. But if you're a nice person, then you're going to do very well. Okay, so I know that fulfilling this purpose of making that impact and getting out there and making this life, it can be challenging because the biggest thing that you probably struggle with is to get that professional experience. You got to have the professional experience in order to be on the film set all the time to make professional connections. And then you have to make the connections to get to the really good paying work which is actually being paid as an actor, thousand bucks a day, being paid as a sound mixer, two thousand dollars a day, being paid as a DP, probably around two thousand twenty five hundred dollars a day, uh, like DIT, probably six seven hundred dollars a day, um, first assistant camera, first AD nine hundred dollars a day, producer nine or nine hundred to a thousand dollars a day. So a lot of these jobs, those are, that's good money. So if you're doing 15 days in a month and you're making six, seven hundred, seven fifty a day, that's around ten thousand dollars a month. So it's pretty good, and you're making your living on film sets. And one of the best things is the fact that if you're working 15 days a month and you're making ten grand in a month, that's the, probably the best paying part part-time job you ever found, right? That's amazing, isn't it? So you've got 15 days that are completely free, that you can work on in any way and spend any way you want. Isn't that amazing? So that's one reason why people love the film industry. When you work, you make a lot of money. The reason why you make a lot of money is that you're not working Monday through Friday. You're working and we're doing 12 hour days, 13 hour days. So we're, we're working, we're making a lot of money, working pretty hard those days that are shoot days. And then when we don't work, then we don't make any money. But it doesn't matter because you make a lot of money when you do work. Does that make sense? But they have to master the craft of how to get the work. That's the whole point. Because without that, you won't get that work. What are some of the challenges that you're experiencing right now? Just getting a spot. Do you mean just getting a job? Getting on set as a job? Probably what you meant there, right? Meeting people to get the work, getting started, finding the opportunity, finding a lot of opportunities, right? Making the leap from little sets to getting bigger sets. Hey, that's really well said, Pat. I like that. I don't even know where to begin. Okay, that's really well said. Okay. Uh, getting casted for roles and making money consistently as an actor. Yes. Working actor is what you're looking at. I would say, as a filmmaker, a lack of funding to produce the content I want. Right. However, you're, it's really important that you learn our way of doing it because to be a filmmaker, what you want to do is you want to combine making your own films with working on professional sets. And the reason why that's so important is because I know you are a filmmaker. I know you are a director. Where's Weba? Looking for Weba real quick. Um, I know you are, this is who you are through and through and that is what you should be doing. I can't find, oh, there's Weebo, okay, cool, gotcha. Um, and in addition to that, you want to get on professional sets. Do you know why? Because those people will send you work. Very, very basically, those people will send you work. You won't get discovered. Has it happened yet? <laughs> no, how it's going to happen is you're going to be doing your work. Okay, okay, so you're still going to be doing it. And this, and as I'm talking to Weba, I'm talking to everybody here because it's all the same, you know? Trying to practice your craft from outside the business, doing your craft from outside the business where you're making very little money a year doing it, you're really wasting your time because time is passing. You gotta be smart about this and do what other fil struggling filmmakers do not do. That is get on the frickin' sets and make a ton of connections and then have these people finance your films. Have these people know who you are and start directing second unit, start directing these little web things that are actually out there funded by Coca-Cola or funded by Nike or working with celebrities. Oh yeah, you can work with celebrities right away even though you haven't done very much. Sure you can. Can you reach it out? Can you set up the whole thing? How are you going to make all these relationships if you're not even in the professional industry? So you have to get in the professional industry. It's not that hard. You can do it. 
and uh, you've already done something quite amazing, which is making your own films. Now this goes for Weeba, but it goes for everybody else here. You guys have done a lot. It's just that what's missing probably for all of you guys is the professional connections, the professional relationships. The only way you can get those, you guys, is by being on professional sets all the time and working alongside people. You must work alongside people because that's how you make the relationship. Just meeting them at an event, I don't get to see you work. I don't even know who you, I don't even know. I can say, oh, that's a nice person. But if I don't see you work, if I'm not working with you, I'm not going to, I'm just not going to think of you for an opportunity. And if you're not in there, we've been talking to me, uh, saying, oh, I got something coming up this weekend that I'm really excited about. I'm shooting this and we're shooting this short scene and it's got a special effect. Things happen here or whatever it is, describing what it is and getting a dialogue going. I'm never going to think about you. Okay, because how it works, you guys, as, as you guys probably know, is that who is referring work to each other? <laughs> Everybody in the film industry is referring work to each other. It's all that circle. That's all where it's happening. It's all happening right there. They're all giving work to each other. You know why? Because then they can get work back. So it's their careers. Everybody's freelance. So that's why it happens that way. That's why they don't look outside. All right, makes sense. Hey, it's, it's good to know because now you won't waste more time without adding this element. You can keep making your own films, but you must add the element where you're on sets all the time. Okay, now, okay, I, now I made some slides for you. I'm going to go through them really quick just to kind of set things up and get the, get the flow going here and also to remind me and keep me on track to what I want to actually talk about here. So in the right place, if... You don't know where to find the professional work, like we just said in the chat. You don't know how to get consistent work. Consistent work is the most important thing because getting on one shoot in one month is nothing. Getting on three shoots in one week is what you need to be doing. And also, if you're not 100% confident in your ability to turn your passion into thousands of film shoots. Yes, I just want to get this very clear in your mind. What we are talking about is thousands of film shoots, not one where you make it big. You will need to start to shift your perspective to what this really is, a business. You don't have to make it big or get lucky uh, or have somebody discover you or your talent. That Let other people do that. They won't go anywhere. What you need to do, what you want to do is work on thousands of film shoots and do your magic from inside the industry. That's the only way it's going to happen. So then while you're doing this, you're getting paid the whole time. So you don't need to go to film school, you guys. You can learn it all on the film sets. You want to fill your schedule with film shoots every week. And uh, perhaps you're having the problem you don't have the connections to get that work right now. So you need an automatic system that you can control, like a water faucet. Yeah, you need to know how to get this work coming in. Okay, so everything I'm teaching is not based on theory. As you guys may know, I'm in the film industry. I'm on shoots every single week. I'm in demand. I do commercials, you guys, which is why you won't find me on IMDb. I'm working all the time. And uh, there's a reason why. I'm doing the things that I'm teaching you to do. Everything I teach, there are around 400 people around the world who are actually doing it, who are A-listers, who are implementing it. So this is not theory. They have done it. And none of them were in the business before. And now they are. And they're taking jobs that other people um, you know, have been trying to get. And they've got it. So you don't want to compete against us. You really want to become one of us. Two <laughs> later, which we're not going to talk about this today, you can take it further with A-List program. Just so you know, that's an option out there. And that's our paid program. And don't worry about that right now. Okay, so you're going to realize through talking to me how close you are in going 100% into film as your career with whatever job you're doing now, even if you're getting unemployment or whatever it is you're doing now. Some people are doctors. We have chiropractors. We have dentists that have done this program. We have pharmacists, nurses, doc yeah, as I said, doctors. We have a doctor, a medical doctor that's in this program. And they decided this is now I want, not how I want to spend my life. I want to go 100% into film. So you're going to have the right tools and training to actually do that in this class. So the three biggest mistakes preventing you from getting professional work. Okay, so I'm going to go over that and I'm going to go over this three-part framework. Now I'm not going to do this today. I'm going to do this on Sunday. So you're going to see the things you're doing that's working against you and also find the solution inside this framework. So this is exact system. I'm going to teach you this system. 
uh, on Sunday that I teach inside the paid program. Okay. So I'm Janet. I've been 22 years in the business. I won an Emmy for National Geographic. I traveled around the world working for National Geographic. I'm based in Los Angeles. And I love systems. I love methods. I love implementing, which is the most important part. I love not thinking about it. I love doing it. I love figuring it out as we go. And actually, if you were somebody that's already like that, like you just get in, you figure it out, you're going to do very well in the film industry. If you think about everything too much, then you're not going to do so well in the film industry because the most important thing is implementing. It's doing. Okay, here's just some pictures of my life on the film sets. David Beckham, that's Kevin Hart in the background. This is shooting at the Universal back lot. This is shooting at the Warner Brothers back lot. There's the Emmy I was talking about. This is shooting at Venice Beach. This is a camera car. See, the car, there's a whole like techno crane on, on a car. Uh, we also do parties at my house and we help each other and we refer each other work. Okay, this is Ashley Jackson who started in Seattle and she's an actor. This is Jessica Parker who is an actor and started in Columbus, Ohio. This is Jesse who's a production manager and was a psychologist. This is Christian who started in Philadelphia and he is a um, talent agent, a Hollywood agent. This is Jake who started as an actor and he's a production designer. Patrick is a sound mixer and was a teacher before. And we have people from London and Vancouver. It's just that most of them don't fly to come to my house. So if you want to come to my house, you certainly can. <laughs> yes, we have all these people that are in the business. And we do outings and we go look at art and we have a very high quality life. And these are just celebrities I work with. And you're going to work with these celebrities too. I just worked with John Hamm. Two months ago, worked with Logic not long ago. I worked with Jennifer Lawrence recently. I worked with Jennifer Aniston like two months ago. Liam, I worked with like last year. I worked with Taylor Swift like in November. Sandra Bullock, a long time ago actually. Selena, I worked with a bunch of times. And I worked with a bunch of times with Seth, Samuel Jackson, worked with him all the time. Johnny Depp, before he got into trouble, I worked with him. I worked with Matt Damon like three months ago. Russell Brand was a couple years ago. Anyway, so this is my me back when I was uh, in my 20s with my mom and my dad. They're, we were from a very low middle class family. My dad was an auto mechanic teacher. My mom worked at Shopgo hanging uh, lingerie on like you know, she works at Shopko in the lingerie department. And at this point, I was drinking a lot. This is my boyfriend at the time. He actually didn't drink that much. I was the one that drank a lot. And I studied so hard in college so that I could get a great, just ensure that I would have a great life. And what happened was after getting internships, after internships in the last, and I put myself through school for the internship with IBM, okay, which was great, but then it came to the time where I was graduating and they didn't want me. And I was like, oh, I mean, that was like, wow. I, I was devastated, you know, because I just pictured myself being this white collar professional living this amazing life. Well, they didn't want me. So I started working for Kodak. This is when I worked for Kodak, who bought IBM's copier division. They hired me, but I wanted to be with IBM. So, but the great thing is that the most disappointing moments of your life could be the best times. Do you know why? <laughs> the reason why is because I would never be in the film industry if I started working with IBM. I'd probably be a career person and I would have turned out a lot differently than I have turned out. I wouldn't be as entrepreneurial. I wouldn't have been traveling all over the world. I wouldn't have met my husband who I, I would probably be middle-aged, living somewhere, some town I didn't really want to be in, just trying to be happy. Now, you know, we make a lot of money, we travel the world, we have an amazing house, we have parties in the summertime, we're about to start the party, the summertime party time in this house. And um, it's an amazing life. And it all came from the film industry, you guys. So this was back in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin, going to bars every weekend. This was my life. It's like, was this, where, was this my future if I kept living that life? And you might feel like this now. You're like, if I keep living this life, 
then this is what I'm going to get. You know, the, the life you're living now, unless you dramatically change it, you're probably going to continue with that life. So oftentimes, you guys, there's a moment. Now, remember this for the workshop that we do this weekend. There's a moment where you go, you know, holy shit. The writing is on the wall. If I don't change it now, I probably never will because it takes a lot of energy to have that kind of breakthrough happen. So this happened to me at this time of my life. Like I was like 25 and I was watching soap operas, so I knew I was getting depressed. And I would go to the basement cafeteria and I would have this donut and coffee and it was like the highlight of my freaking life. And when I realized that, I was like, holy shit, you better change your life because this is the best part of your day. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't even know film industry, you guys. I studied business. I just knew I wanted an exciting life. So even if you know, hey, I like writing, but you know, I, if you know that you just want an exciting life, film industry can be, like, it can provide it. And you don't even know what amazing jobs you could be doing that could give you that life really good life so you'd be like me where you're a professional person and you're like I just want an exciting life it's a good place to be by the way don't feel bad if you don't know what you want to do you you can't know you guys until you actually get on all these sets and then you'll know so with this being the highlight of my day made me realize holy shit I have got to change my life because I can see the writing on the wall and it looks like that <laughs> you know it looks like um, just nothing to look forward to, dreary, and that's not the life I wanted. I wanted a life like that. Now, that's the canals in Venice. I had never even seen that before. But now, I, that's where I, I don't live there, but I live like an hour away from there. And that is beautiful. Sunny skies, California lifestyle. You know, that, I mean, that's, that's the picture of the kind of life I wanted. I wanted that beautiful life. So I knew, hey, there's no, the only way that it's going to happen is if I freaking change. If I change, if I change it now. And then if I, <laughs> and this is Venice, right? So I knew that this was the, this was I, what I wanted to create. But the question is, how do you do it? You know? And uh, this is from a film shoot that I did on the beach. We're shooting at the beach. Beach sounds like really fun. It looks like real fun. There's a director right over there. But um, it's really hard to shoot on the beach. You know, if sand gets everywhere, it's windy. It's hard to get the sound. It's hard to get the shot. There's salt in the air. The beach is not fun. Anyway, um, that was the life that I wanted. That's my point in showing you that picture. This is the life that I wanted. This kind of exciting life. So at this point in my life, you guys, remember me with the picture of the copy machine, right? At this point, I had to make a decision. And the decision I made was I'm just going to quit and start traveling. So I cashed in my retirement. And I started traveling around the world. So I had like $13,000 in, retire in my retirement. And I probably had like, I don't know, five, $6,000 saved up. So to me, that was a whole lot of money. And so I went super low budget and started traveling around the world. Now, this was drastic. Nobody in my family had ever done it. Now, a lot of you guys from London and Australia, you've done this, right? Probably a lot of you guys have done this. Americans don't do this. And I believe that it was so important for me to all of a sudden go, oh, all this stuff you want to do, it's no big deal. You can do it. I mean, you just went all around the world. You can do that. <laughs> so it was really helpful. So here I'm mean, just traveling around the world. This is Malaysia. This is Israel. So then when I was in Africa, I saw this film crew. And I was like, holy shit, I can do that. Because now I'm running out of money. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do now? So I see them, I'm like, oh, I never even thought about that. I could work for National Geographic. Yeah, that's what I can do. All right. So, but the big question was how? So my, I was on the seven-week safari, and it ended in Zimbabwe, uh, Harare. So I took a bus down to South Africa because that's where the, um, uh, that's where the, uh, that's where a lot of the business people, that's where the f wildlife filmmakers and a lot of the film industry, there's, there was more money there. So that's where it was. That was really the place to be if you're going to be in Africa. So I went to South Africa. Okay, so this is where some of my struggles started happening, but it was also very exciting. The fear got real because like, okay, now you're doing this. You're not just traveling for fun anymore. Now you're trying to get film industry. Fact is, I didn't know anybody who had ever made any money in the film industry. Nobody from my family. Nobody. I'm from Wisconsin, remember? 
and nobody was supporting me to do this. They're like, you're trying to do what? <laughs> okay. You know, like wildlife, you don't even like to go to the zoo. I mean, this doesn't even make any sense. So I would, and when I was in South Africa, I would go to film festivals. Okay. I try to meet people there. I go to music festivals, try to meet people. And I was meeting people, but they were more like small time people. And it really, and nobody had anything going on. These were also free shoots. They didn't lead to anything. So I would send emails to professionals. Okay. But the emails were not really very good. I didn't really know what to say. And I didn't really have any experience on my resume. So that wasn't working. I got a lot of no responses. And uh, yeah, I would try to build a resume, but I really didn't have anything on it. All I had was copier salesperson and traveler, but what's, you know, that doesn't really help. Okay. So then I would try to meet people for coffee and that didn't really work either. So also I had no professional experience. I had no connections. I had no, I gave them, here's a mistake I made. I gave them no clear way to hire me. I'd be like, yeah, I've always really wanted to be a wildlife filmmaker. And they're like, okay, I've been doing it for 15 years and you want me to like train you or something? I mean, they're like, uh, I don't know. Thank you. So I didn't have, I didn't have a good way for them to hire me. I didn't give them a clear way for them to hire me. And at this point, I'm like 25, 26, 27. I could have been 27. I didn't have time to start at the bottom. I didn't have time to go back to school. Not that I had any money to go to school and I didn't want to get any debt. So that wasn't going to happen. So what are some things you've tried? Here's some of the things I know that our people have tried. They keep taking classes, but it leads to absolutely nothing. Okay. They can, maybe it's fun, but you go to the class and then you end the class and then you still have to, you're still not getting work. Like you don't make your money back taking that class. Like the class is usually like 1500 bucks and then you come out and you get paid work from that, that pays off that class and paid work that pays you for the rest of your life. No. Um, sending resume to production companies, but then they don't respond. Sending real to production companies and they don't respond. Freebie shoots, but they don't lead to professional work. So this is some of the things like frustrations that I know our people have. Going back to school and getting into more debt, and that doesn't really sound like very much fun. Picking people's brains, but nobody wants their brain picked. So the coffee things, that doesn't really work so well. Um, I, I, this is what I also did. Poor follow-up. Hey, if you ever need a blah, blah, blah. That doesn't make them go, oh yeah, sure. If I ever need that, I'm going to hire you. And you just can't get people to give you a shot. Well, probably because you're coming at them with them trying to give you a shot. If you just give me a shot, that does not make people want to hire you. So then I started a new kind of, I kind of took a step back and I started a new approach and I was like, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to study the crap out of what I'm really passionate about. I'm going to know this inside and out. So I have a lot to talk about with these people instead of begging them and coming across as, uh, um, like desperate, I'm going to be, I'm going to come across like I'm at least like, I know this business as much as I can know inside freaking out. So I started watching all these wildlife films. So I was staying in a youth hostel and I'd sit there and watch wildlife films one after and after another. And I would watch the credits and I would write down everybody in the credits. And I knew who they all were. I knew what they shot. I knew the music that they used. I knew the storyline. I knew the animal behavior. I st and I knew everything that everybody had shot. Like I would look their name up and I would find other stuff they shot. Oh, they shot something with great white sharks. Oh, this person shot something with elephants. Oh, this one was this. And I knew all the storylines and I was reading everything I get my hands on. And I found this magazine article with an article about this guy, this guy who was there in South Africa as a photographer. He's actually a war photographer and he was from Boulder, Colorado. So I called the editor and I'm like, Hey, can I have this guy's information? And they gave it to me. So I called David up and I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm from uh, Wisconsin. I'm here in Johannesburg and I'd really like to meet you. And, uh, he's like, sure. Come on down. We're playing pool. Come on down. I'm like, Holy shit. Okay, great. So I go down to this bar and all these people playing pool and it's, and I walk in and it's all these Pulitzer Prize winning journalists and photographers, like people that have shot stuff that is famous. 
And uh, I met all these people. He introduced me to all these people. And so then they were like, hey, you know what? We're all here because the elections are happening in South Africa. You should really go work with ABC News. I know the person over there. You could go talk to them. I was like, oh, I never even thought about that. So through the connections, remember, this is all starting with connections. Through that connection, I went over to ABC News. They gave me a job. I pretty much within two days, I got fired from that job. But then I got another job because I was already on the inside. Now, why did I get fired? Because I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't. I, they hired me to be a fixer. I don't even know journalism. I didn't know how to do that job. Now, you guys, today, by the way, I just want to make a point here. Um, you may not be able to do a job today, but within a couple months, you could do that job. So don't feel bad. There's a lot that you can learn. Nothing, it does not mean that you're not good at it. So at the time, okay, I got fired because I wasn't good at it. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and so I worked for WTN News after that but I still got to be around all these people. So this is what I call the vectoring method. So through that, I would meet other producers that were shooting really cool stuff, and I worked as a production assistant. I was working as a production assistant and a fixer for ABC News, and then I did it again for this wildlife documentary where we're moving elephants. This elephant is sleeping. We're, sh we're in these helicopters darting from the sky, jumping out, pulling these elephants into these big semi-trucks and moving them to a new, less crowded place in the bush. Now, when all this started happening, you guys, here's what's happening. This is what, this is what I want to teach you. Okay, this is called vectoring. This is called using experiences and people to build a story that opens up even more experiences and people. Now you're going to learn how to do this in the A-list program. The A-list system shows you, it's naturally set up to have you be doing this. Um, don't worry about that right now. I'm teaching you the elements of it so you can at least understand the basics of it. But if you want to master this, A-list program. This is uh, the Bang Bang Club. <laughs> These are actors, right? And they actually shot a movie. These guys were the real ones and they were my friends. These are some of the people I met in the, in the pool party. And they become my, became my friends. So these were famous people. So then I came to, actually then I went to, to there's a lot more with this vectoring. I got to tell you another time, but I'm going to shorten. I'm going to skip about a year. And then I come to Los Angeles and this is my apartment. And I found this apartment while I was on set because, again, all answers are found on film sets for you as well. And um, I met the craft service guy there, and he wanted to share this one room efficiency with somebody. And he was paying 300 bucks a month because it was actually just a room off of, off of another apartment. So it was like this super cheap little room, and he wanted to share it. So I was like, sure, are you kidding me? I'll sleep on the floor. So he had the couch. I slept on the floor. And this was the apartment, and this was the only other room in the place. There was a sliding door, and then it was like the room, and then it was, you know, a room with no windows at all, just nothing in there, just the couch. That's all that was in there. No TV, just nothing. And then this was the end of the place, and it had a toilet and a shower. Perfect. So I would sit on this toilet, and I would call people once I got to L.A., now, some of the things that I did were good. Some of the things did not work and were not good. So I um, will tell you in the A-list program what to do that works and definitely what to do that doesn't work. <laughs> all right. So then I started getting shoots, and I started traveling all over the world. This is in Amazon. This is in Patagonia. This is in Alaska. This is in Alaska again. This is Alaska again. You notice it's not always fun. Sometimes filmmaking is hard. Uh, this is working with National Geographic filmmaker Jeff Wayman. This is working at Warner Brothers eating a bacon maple donut. Warner Brothers shoot. I don't eat stuff like that anymore, by the way. This is shooting with a very famous director in L.A. Uh, we worked with William Shatner on this day. This was shooting somewhere else. I don't know where, somewhere down Long Beach. This is on the John Hamm shoot, and they brought in a coffee bar. It's just free. Everybody could order anything you want. That's very typical on film shoots. There's the Emmy that I have. This is uh, one of our outings where we went to the Getty Center. So our mission is to have a dynamic group of professionals around the world who dominate, and that's what we have people all over. We've got lots of people in Toronto, lots of people in London, lots of people in Vancouver. But you do have to expect to work to make this career happen. Nothing will land in your lap. And what we're doing is we're talking about a smarter way of doing this, you guys. So from no work, 
like this is a steady cam right there, right? Two, and this is a techno crane. Two, working full time. These are just our people working on set. This is at Universal in one of the big stages. That's another shoot that I was on. So here's the thing, you guys. People come into, now this is the United States, of course, although we've got Toronto, Vancouver here. And so wherever you live in any of these areas, people are now flying into your area to shoot. It used to be L.A., New York City. That was it. Now we're shooting all over the country. Do you know why? And we're shooting all over the world. Do you know why? It's because of money. It's cheaper to shoot in Vancouver. It's cheaper to shoot in Toronto. It's cheaper to shoot in Atlanta and Miami. So now it's spread out all over. So wherever you are based, you can get into the film industry where you live and then you can get experience, you can get fast, you can get good, and then you're going to meet people because what's happening is these people are flying into your area to shoot there. You can meet them, you're going to know them then, and then they'll hire you and maybe when you come to LA or New York City or Atlanta, you'll already know these people and you can hit the ground running. So there's no, experience, there's no excuse anymore to not have experience where you live. Even if you're in the middle of nowhere, you can drive three hours to get to a major market where stuff is happening and get experience and get connected with people in these bigger markets. Same thing in London. London is the hub, but if you're in Bristol, people come to shoot in Bristol, you meet those people, then you go to London and you work with them. Same thing with Brighton, right? Okay. And then, of course, Toronto and Vancouver. That'll be your new home. We have professionals that come from banking, finance, medical, that get into the film industry. Moms, if you're like, I'm a, I'm a mom, and I, or I'm a dad, and we have kids, and I think, you know, we, I can't get in the film industry. There are 80% of the people in the film industry have kids. There's a ton of single moms. There's single dads. So that's not a reason to not get in the film industry. Students. Students can get in the film industry. In fact, you could put yourself through school. So you just want to think differently than most people. Most people, like, they put up obstacles. Oh, I can't get in the film industry. I can't do much this summer because I've got summer camp that I'm doing, going to. Or I'm going on vacation to Europe. There's not much I can do for my film industry career. I'm like, are you kidding me? How, obviously, you don't want it bad enough because if you really wanted it, you could be on vacation and you could get on film shoots while you're on vacation. Then you can come back and you'd have a whole story to tell. So, yeah, students, you know, if what you want to do is be in the film industry, why don't you get in the film industry while you're in school? And I've had people do that. And they were working with celebrities. And they were, nobody else was doing it in the whole college. So, what does that mean for that person? They're exceptional. So if you want to be exceptional, you do what other people don't do. This will be my major theme, you guys. Do what other people won't do, and you will have a life that's beyond anybody else's. That's really the secret. And as you can see, the vectoring has a lot to do with that. You do what other people don't do. Small towns. If you live in a small town, you can drive and be to a bigger market within an hour. Two hours, three hours, who cares? Even five hours. What does it matter? If you want to be in the film industry, you'll drive. If you're like, I don't have a car, borrow a car. Any way you can do it, get there. Stay with somebody in that town. You must have no excuses. Nothing is a problem. If you want this bad enough, you will figure it out. Major markets, if you're already in LA, perfect, that's great. <laughs> You're there already. If you're already in New York, you're already in Atlanta, you're already in London, you're already in Vancouver, you're already in Toronto, perfect. The industry is booming. You want to get in when the industry is booming. You know why? Because that's when they add second unit. That's when they add more shoot days. That's when they hire people. Because people like me are booked. And that's when they hire people that are not top tier yet, but they're moving up. Okay? So the biggest problem that I see is that debt anchors people to a day job or a career that they never wanted. And they know that film work pays really well, but since this business is word of mouth and they know that, they don't have a clear way to get that work. And they know that time is passing. Okay, so if that's you, then 
This is a situation that a lot of people are in, and this is what we will break you out. So here's what I get, did, did to get the work, just to give you a quick summary. I focused on getting on professional sets. That was my main focus. I did not try to make my own films. I did not try to become known as somebody outside the business that did this. I got on professional sets. I met everybody, and then from there, networked into the niche I wanted to get into. I focused on working in departments that were related to my craft. Okay, so it was all about my craft that I wanted to do. I built experience in my craft. There's a lot to learn. I asked very solid and unique questions for the filmmakers out there, for the DPs. When you're on set, you're going to also have a lot of good questions that you're going to get because you're doing your other stuff out there in the world. So you're going to be like, oh my God, I get to work with like 10 camera people today. I'm going to ask a bunch of questions and they're going to be like questions that are s unique and show that you're out there freaking doing it, you guys. So your questions are gonna be like, um, yeah, this weekend I just shot this thing and we shot with a red camera and it overheated and we had to do this. What have you done in that situation? Or what lens did you find worked really well when you have this kind of shot? It's these kind of questions. Now, what does that do? That gets people endeared to you and you are actually creating mentors on set. Remember, I said, Everything comes from the film set. Nobody gets discovered. You must develop your own mentors on set. And then, instead of taking classes outside the film industry trying to get discovered, no, don't do that. You want to get on set first. Go to classes that professionals go to. How do you find out about that? You ask them. <laughs> okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to make relationships with people who hire you people who become part of your team, and people who refer you work. This is the 50, 50, 20. A core group of 50 people who hire you, a core group of 50 people who refer you, and 20 people who are your team. And uh, now I'm going to take a couple of people. Fantastic! Was that good? Was that good for you? Does it help give you some food for what you want to do? Oh my gosh, I just got a text from one of the A-list mentors, Isabel. Okay, J I just came in. Hi, Janet. I always like sharing good news, so I just got a new job. I'm, offici I'm officially a digital producer for NBC late night TV shows. Holy shit. Digital producer. This is one of our people. This is what I love because the whole point is to use this program to move very quickly into producing jobs, very quickly into these crafts that pay a lot. So this is very exciting. Wow, Isabel, that's great. And this, and Isabel, by the way, she's one of our A-list mentors. I don't know if she's gonna have time to be in there posting, but you can definitely congratulate her on this if you want to, and then we might get her to respond. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of mentors. Everybody's on set. When you're on set, you know how it is, right? Right? You're working. You're, you're, that's, and you, you better be paying attention. So a lot of people are working. So some people are gonna be more in there, and some people will be less in there. I'm talking about our, you know, the Yammer Mastermind. What questions might you have in the chat? Something like burning, something that's bothering you, something around a concern that you have. Why isn't this method something taught in film school? That's a great question. Because the people in film school are not in the business, they're not in the trenches. So the only way that you know about this is if you're on the film sets all the frickin' time. So maybe they used to be in the business 10 years ago, but it's changed so much in the last 10 years. And also, if you knew how to do this, you don't need film school. You get your education on set, so the film schools don't want to teach you that. They want you to spend a year in film school playing with the equipment and writing your own stuff and doing your own stuff, which is what people want. They want to spend a hundred grand and get a degree doing that. That's fine. It's just that that hundred grand is the problem and it doesn't lead them into the professional world. Like, professionals are not going, oh, you went to film school? Great, we'll hire you. That doesn't, they don't even care that you went to film school, which is hard to take because you're like, hey, this sucks. I went all, I spent all this money. And you should care. But people in the business are like, I have, it's not my fault that you spent all this money. We, we don't care, <laughs> you know? So you'll find this to be true. You'll find that if you went to film school that you, you're, you probably are not in the business and that's why you're here. Or if you, when you go to film school and you get out and you contact professionals, they're not going to care. And when you're on set, you're not even going to talk about it. 
In fact, you probably will push it down as something you will not talk about. Because nobody wants to talk about that, and it doesn't, it, they're going to be kind of like, well, wow, that means you got some debt. But if you went to film school, you guys, then the best thing to do if you have the debt is to uh, get in the business and start working and just pay it off as fast as you can. Of course, it's not something that you want, but if it motivates you to try even harder, then who cares? It's just money. You know, you're going to make a ton of money in your life. So don't feel bad about debt and don't feel bad about film school. Just like, let's just like from now, kick it into gear and start working your ass off and make something great of your life. That's the whole point of this conversation. Phil Hope, I'm going to actually take your question. Okay. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm, I'm very good. Very excited. The question that I had was that film school question. Um, <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I, uh, I, I won't name the school only because it was a very good, it was a very good school. I enjoyed attending. I graduated two years ago and coming out of, coming out of sort of the, the end of it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've applied for so many jobs through the career source that they have mm -hmm. uh, through the school, but you know, nothing has come from it. A few freelance things here and there, but you know, nothing that's been, you know, worth continuing or, you know, nothing that's brought on, you know, other work. So I guess that that was that why I posed that question, you know, because I've spent a lot of money. Well, I am spending a lot of money because I will be paying that debt off for the rest of my life. Um, or, or in the next two years. I mean, I would love that. How much um, is it? How much debt? Let's see. I went to the school back in 2001 when I graduated high school. Mm -hmm. I st stupidly flunked out of it because I was young. I found the party life a little bit more interesting. So all together, about $130,000. Okay, that's not, I find that to be very common. Just so you know, that a lot of people have that. And another thing that I want to tell you is that when you have these times in your life where you're like, I just, for some reason, you cannot kick it into gear, like that time where you, whatever, flunked out. I find that also really common. And that's actually part of the success uh, uh, path. Usually we screw up. And then we're like, okay, I'm fucking doing it now. And, it, and that's what actually gives you that. Because if you're just like, oh, you're steadily doing it, then you kind of go like this, you know? But when, when you kind of hit rock bottom and you're like, holy shit, wake up call, my life is going to suck if I don't kick into gear now. You know it. Because it was the same thing as like my copier salesperson. It was just like, my life is going to suck if this is going to be what I'm going to be doing. The writing is on the freaking wall. I'm going to be married to somebody I want to be married to. I'm probably going to be drinking too much, smoking, whatever. Um, it's not going to give me this life I envisioned, and I'm really disappointed. So how do I get that life? So that gives you enough hunger. That dissatisfaction gives you enough hunger to actually do whatever it fucking takes to make it happen. So the answer is not going after postings. That's not the way the business works. All of these call sheets here, I got props, but they're all like, these are all of these call sheets that I just kind of accumulated, you know, call sheets. I just got one. I'm going to get one for Friday shoot, but call sheet after call sheet after call sheet. This one here, James Mansgold, James Mansgold, who did, you know, walk the line. Walk the Line, I worked with Darren Aronowski, who shot Mother. I worked with him recently. Mansgold is a major director. And this was for Universal. This is a big call sheet. So the point is, is that all of these people knew each other. None of these were postings. So you just have to learn now how to get into this world. I will never tell you, unless you're in a place like Cleveland, you can get some stuff on postings. But... That's still not enough to build a business. you got to get inside and be on all of these film shoots, talking to all these people in these departments, and at the same time, take what your passion is. Is it writing, directing, camera? What is yours? Editing. But, you know, that, that's Editing. something, you know, the, the, the postings that come through, it's just strange to, to spend that much money with a, with a university or an institution and for them just to go, well, okay, well, thanks for your money. Um, here's a, here's an individual who wants a music video shot that will go really basically nowhere. And that's, that's the kind of the, like you said, uh, in some of your, your videos I was watching, you know, you get stuck doing the kind of the conferences and the, and the weddings and you know, that, that kind of thing. And you just think that is not going to pay my bill. 
yeah. you know, I've, I've got not leading I've anywhere got, either. Right. I've got my student loans at the minute. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of them on deferment, which means mm -hmm. they're going to in soon, which mm -hmm. have all been gaining interest over the time. And, and you, like you say, I'm, I'm looking at a six, $700 bill. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking, well, why wouldn't the school teach, you know, this, this method to get into the film industry where you're making that kind of money to, to, you know, cause it looks good for the school. The school's going to go, okay, well, I've, we taught this guy, we taught this, this young lady how to break into the industry. We taught them all that. And now they're, they're making loads of money. We put them in our, in our hall of fame, you know, for, for attending our school. I, I just don't get why they wouldn't teach this method. And I thought, well, you know, like yourself being in the industry, if you've talked to people who have gone to film school and have gotten nothing out of it, um, you know, if, if there was an answer to it and why the schools are getting away with, with charging people that amount of money. Yeah, because people will pay it and that's what people want. And what we're really talking about here is, is not really a well-known thing at all. In fact, this is high performance for the, this is a high performance conversation that is actually applied to the film industry. You can have high performance training as a realtor, high performance training as Wall Street. You know, there's masterminds that you can get into in, in Wall Street, in the medical field, and you go fast. So this is just like a mastermind, high performance training aimed towards the film industry. There's nothing out there like this. So it's this kind of, you have to have, you have to be somebody that's actually working in the business that's at this level, like, I don't know if you know this, but commercials is really top level work along with union feature films. You know, people really aspire to get into commercials and union feature films from TV shows, from reality. Look at all the different kinds of shoots there are. There's documentary, there's music videos, um, there's sports. You could have a whole crew just doing sports. There's uh, soap operas, there's talk shows. All these are, you know, major. There's like all the stuff, the digital producer stuff that Isabel's doing, the NBC shows top work top of the tier is union feature films and commercials because it's the most money the cushiest jobs and the nicest people which go to the top that the best people will go to the top i know people that started in the business when i did and they're still making 500 bucks a day doing press junkets and entertainment news and behind the scenes covering feature films you know i'm on the big sets and they're still walking around doing shooting behind the scenes, which is, hey, you'd probably love to do behind the scenes and you should do behind the scenes, you know, initially, but then you will quickly move out of that and get into what you want to do, which is probably feature films. So even in the business, there's all these sectors. You just have to be very focused on where you want to go and start having these conversations. I mean, it's a lot of soft stuff we're talking about here. You know, I don't know, I, I can teach this because I'm so involved in having these conversations every single week for the last eight years with all these people all over the world. And I know it and I know the business I know I worked in all these areas. So I know all this stuff. Um, also I'm at the top of my game in, in, in LA in the film industry. So I know what it took to get there where a lot of people didn't have it'd probably be the courage to do it because anybody can do it. I mean, yeah, anybody can do it. You know, if you decide, Hey, this, that's what, that's why this weekend is so important. When you write down Saturday what you want to do, you know, I, I would suspect it's going to be something like being one of the top editors, if that's what you want to do, being one of the top editors uh, in the country, uh, making this amount of money, uh, working with these kind of people, having these kind of clients, editing this kind of stuff, um, and maybe winning awards. You know, you can win Emmys, you can win all sorts of things as an editor. Um, doing it within a certain time frame, paying off that debt. I think you should pay off that debt within two years, maybe three. That's nothing. Don't worry about that debt. You're going to be fine with that debt. You know what? I've got something that I teach people. It's the promotional modeling. I know you don't want to do promotional modeling. It's brand ambassador work, but you could pay that. You could do that in one week. You could work three days, make 700 bucks and that covers it. You're done. Three days, you're done. The rest of the focus is back on film industry. So there's jobs you can get that are high paying, setting up events. You work like, I know you know this kind of work. You've probably even done it, but you just do it. You make the 700 bucks and that's off of your mind. And the rest is like film industry, film industry, film industry. Yeah. 
there's ways of doing it. You can do it. You're going to do it. Are you kidding me? I understand what you're saying about the film schools. And I, believe me, that's why I'm like, film schools are the enemy. Don't do it. You can learn yeah, it all on film set. I didn't, I didn't realize that until kind of coming out of it and realizing that the, the promises that they make, oh, well, you know, it's a 89% job placement rate into the industry and you'll be on set within a few months. And that's just, it's just not, it's just not the way it works. And, and it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, there's, I'm sure there's success stories that come out of film schools. And, you know, I know there is, Oh yeah. yeah. but no matter how hard you work, going through the, the course or going through the, the degree program, um, it may not matter. It may not matter. It doesn't matter that, that you know, I graduated top of my class. Unfortunately, I'm still pouring concrete for the city of Cobalt Beach. And yeah, it, but you know what? You're, no, it does matter because you worked really hard on that, and that's what you're made out of. So uh, you're going to do great. Are you? I wish, I, I wish I had known about this program before I signed the paperwork for the school, though. That's for I Dave. know. I know. That's okay, though. It, it's not going to matter. In 10 years, it's going to make no difference whatsoever. You're going to be doing great. It's just going to be like money. Like I'm telling you, I've wait, I've lost so much money, stock market, bad investments. I don't even think about it. It doesn't matter. Look, I'm in a $3 million house. You know, I take my, I fly my parents over here. I fly them to Europe. All this came from the film industry, you know, and, uh, and I've lost a lot of money, but it doesn't really matter. You're going to make so much. If you decide that you're going to be good, you're going to implement Again, you can pay that thing off. You can do promotional modeling. That I mean, I know that's not the work you want to do, but it's just that it's really easy to get. And you can do it on the weekends. And I know you're working the concrete job, which is hard. But also, again, that's also a benefit. You got hard work that you're doing uh, like that. You're going to get on these film sets. You're going to be like, roll up my sleeve. What do you need? You'll work so hard there because you're like, this is nothing compared to what I do. Are you kidding me? And then all these, like, in the film set, they're, like, so concerned about safety. They're, like, you know, um, make sure that you don't walk underneath this and you walk around. And they're just, like, so careful for everybody's well-being and everything. And you're going to be, like, holy shit, you should see the environment I come from, <laughs> you know. Um, it'll be a pleasure. Yeah, just, just know you're in the right place. And we're going to talk a lot more about this. I'm really glad to meet you. And I'm glad, you know, you're keeping a lot of people here safe from going to film school, too, so. That's really yeah, I would good. definitely, definitely, if, you, if you've got it on your mind, I would truly, truly take a step back from the, from the glamour of going to a film school and think it through. Because coming out of it, I mean, you may be one of the small percentage that get, you know, a great job coming out of it, but chances are you're going to be doing that normal job that you were doing while you were going through the school. Yeah, I agreed. And you know, eventually, I would probably suspect that 98% from what I know, because I'm getting emails all the time, 98% of people that do go to film school that have the debt are not working in the business. They're doing government jobs, they're doing banking jobs, any other jobs, and they're usually not happy, and they have that, le they have that debt. And then there's some people that do start working as production assistants, and in 10 years, yeah, they'll be working in these departments. But if you do this, it's not going to take you 10 years. You're going to get in, you're going to work as a production assistant. And that's what I would recommend. I know nobody wants to be a production assistant, you know, but I'm not going to be like the schools and say, Hey, you know what? Uh, you'll be a DP within a year. No, no, you'll probably, you could be a DP within a year. You could be an editor. You know, you could with, within a year, especially if you do it like what I'm talking about, because you're going to see on Sunday that the magic formula is working on all these sets doing production, also doing uh, producer assistant jobs, director assistant jobs, and editor assistant jobs. By the way, editor assistant jobs, you think, and I know I'm talking to him, but I'm talking to everybody here because this is all the same kind of stuff, you guys. He might think that he's got to go to post-production houses to get his career going, but he doesn't. What you want to do is you want to get on these professional sets work in the camera department, get close to that producer and the director, have conversations with them and just tell them, hey, I'd really love to watch this. I'd love to see this thing get edited. Can I come in? They'll be like, of course. Then you come into the post houses with the director and the producer, which by the way, hired that editor. <laughs> they hired them. You're, the, you're in with them. You're their friends. And you come from a film set experience. You, not just one film set, you're on lots of sets. 
And you know how they got that shot. You know all the terms. You know how that director was thinking. You know why they shot it that way. You know why they did the special effects. You know that they did this shot and the special effects guy was standing in there, so he's going to have to paint himself up. I mean, you just know all this stuff, and uh, you're at a whole different level. So it's you must become more. That's, that's the whole thing. Like This is a reason why we all work so much and work so fast, move into these departments, is we're so focused on moving fast, doing what other people won't do, having a team of people that really makes our knowledge exceptional and creating these relationships by asking really uh, intelligent questions that you get by being out there and doing shit in the world. On set, out there doing your stuff. Could be editing, could be, um, uh, could be camera work. And you don't have to worry about it. If you're so busy with the, the co concrete stuff right now, you're still going to find things that you can do on the side that you will talk about or just paying a paying attention on set. You're going to be like, because it's like kid in the candy store, you know, you'll have so many questions and it's not going to be like most people that come out of film school. Hey, how'd you get where you are today? They're so tired of that. Hey, I'd love to pick your brain. They're like, get the fuck out. You know, they're just so tired of it, you know? But you're there on set. You're like, hey, can I get you a coffee? Hey, can I get you this? Um, hey, why did you use this lens? Because it seemed like this. They're like, oh, actually, the people are so nice. They're just so nice because the nice people are working. The assholes don't work very much. You know, if you have an attitude, you probably don't work very much. So people are so nice, especially in the top work. Like you're going to find people with attitudes in like reality TV or stuff like that, you know you know, the lower level work, which you'll do that work, but that's okay. You do it to get good and to make your mistakes too, by the way. So we have a lot. I could talk about this for hours. As you can tell, you're probably, I don't know if you're getting bored or whatever, but <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for the great question. So good to meet you. Um, thank you, Janet. Very nice meeting you too. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to continuing on the training. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, I think we're going to end the call now. We went a lot longer than I thought, but I mean, I, I hope that you guys feel, and please let me know in Yammer because I love to know what you got out of this. You know, I mean, I, I know I said a lot, but if you can just say the things that kind of meant something to you, like, oh, um, what I got out of this is that I really can do this and it's not going to take me that, that long if I'm focused on this and I can meet certain people and ask good questions or whatever it is, there's a lot more to talk about. We have unions to talk about. We have union contracts. We have how you get medical in the film industry, how you get retirement. Uh, there's a lot. How you learn all this stuff. What kind of jobs you get to move up into these sectors. How do you choose the sector? All this stuff. I mean, it's a big business. A lot to talk about. Lots of jobs out there that all pay well. So, okay, you guys. We'll end the call. I'll see you in Yammer, okay? Okay, bye, everybody.